Hi, Holly Mecker here with Instructional Tech. I am excited to talk to you today about Clever and how Clever can help simplify your students' lives by managing their links and their sign-ons. When looking for a new program with students, the first question I would always ask is, can I log in with Google? That was pretty closely followed by, can I just give students a class code? The last thing I wanted to worry about was creating a class inputting student information, creating usernames and passwords, and then managing all of those usernames. Clever is our solution to that problem. It not only gives students one website to log into instead of logging into different websites all day, but it automatically creates the class, enrolls your students into those classes, and gives students a one button click to access each of the apps or resources. So let's jump into Clever and look at how you can find your Clever account. All right, first we need to find your Clever account. Here I am on the staff landing page. Notice the URL is staff.elkart.k12.in.us. If I scroll down, Clever is one of the options under Common Actions. I'm gonna go ahead and push Clever. Notice the URL for Clever is simply clever.com. You could also directly go to clever.com and it will get you to the same login page. So here I am at Clever's homepage. Over to the right, I'm going to go ahead and push the caret and scroll down to teacher or staff. That is where I, as a teacher, am going to log in. If you are a student, the student could simply tap log in as a student. Important to notice here that it says I am within our school district. So it says Elkhart Community School District at the top. I'm going to go ahead and push log in with Google. I'm going to log in with my Google credentials for Elkhart. Here I am on my Clever homepage. You're going to notice a few changes if you've used Clever last year. First, up at the top we now have a district page and also a shared with me page. Under my teacher pages, notice I have a Mrs. Mecker's page. That can easily be customizable. I'm going to go ahead and tap on that page. This is where I can change the title of my page and also add different resources. Let's go ahead and look at how you edit the page name. If I take my mouse and I hover over the title, it is now editable. I could change that name to whatever I would like that page to be called. I save by simply clicking off of the title. Notice I have three categories here. I have reading websites, helpful math links, and early finishers. You can easily add a category to organize your resources by pushing Create and Share in the bottom right corner. I'm going to go ahead and click Create and Share and add a new category. I now have a category for Science Resources. Let's go ahead and add some resources into these categories. I'm going to again push Create and Share and I'm going to upload a PDF. I'm going to give it a title. And I'm going to say what category I want that to be under. This is a multiplication table. I'm going to put it under helpful math links. I can go ahead and pick an icon. And I'm going to upload my file. I'm going to push add PDF at the bottom. Now notice under helpful math links, I have my multiplication table. Let's go ahead and roster our students into a program. I'm going to go ahead and push Create and Share and choose an app. I'm thinking about math, so maybe I want to enroll my class into Extra Math. I'm going to select Extra Math. It gives me more information about Extra Math in case I'm not sure what it is. And then there is an Install button. I'm going to push Install. Notice on this page it has my name and email and then also we'll have the list of my students' first names, last initials, and their grade. That is what Extra Math uses to create their login. It's under Mrs. Mecker's resources, that's the page that I'm using. Next, I'll push Allow and Continue. Every program will look a little different on what it looks like to enroll your students. Most of them are as easy as just pushing OK. So that's my teacher page. The teacher page is amazing and is shared with all of your students. This could be a place where you would put all of your PDFs, your links, and all the applications so students just need to visit your one teacher page to access 
all the things they need digitally in your class. Now, let's check out the district page. Students all have access to the district page. This is where they are going to access all of their online textbooks and resources that are shared by the district. For example, if they are looking for their math curriculum page, they'll find it under the district page. Same with their reading curriculum. They'll find their link under the district page. The last page we're going to look at is the shared with me. Notice when I click on shared with me, there's nothing there, but that's because no teachers have shared their page with me yet. However, let me show you how you can share your page. Let me head over to my teacher pages. I'm gonna push the gear and push edit sharing. This is where I can change who has access to my teacher page. By selecting this carrot, I can select what teacher in my building I would like to share my teacher page with. Now when teachers receive this page, it is view only. They will not be able to edit your teacher page. The last thing I wanna show you is the library. The library is where you can find all the applications and programs that work with Clever. Let's go ahead and go to the library now. The library is in your blue toolbar up in the right hand corner. In the library, we can use filters to find which programs are best for your students. If I scroll down just a little bit in the library, here is where the filter is. I can select grade ranges that are appropriate for my students. I can also select which content area I'm interested in. Right now, I'm interested in math. Here you can find all the different options of things that I can add right to my teacher homepage, most of which will roster for us. This is also a great place to go if you're interested in looking for something new for your students. Let me go into the advanced filters to show you one more important filter. Notice the pricing option. Here, I can select whether I want programs that are free, that are freemium, so you can use it free, but there is a premium part options that have a free trial, or things that have a subscription. So that's clever. That's how easy it is to make a one-stop shop for your students and everything that you have digitally for your kiddos. Do you have any questions? Leave them in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and have a great day.